look at some Pythagoras in 3D. We're going to focus mainly on cuboids. We're also going to look at a triangular prism like this one here. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can apply the rules that we've already looked at to these kind of shapes. Um, if you're still not sure about the different formula or how they're used, I'd say maybe go back to the intro uh, video on Pythagoras that I did. That was two-dimensional stuff. But if you're confident with that, then we're going to move forward with some 3D shapes today. So like I said, we're going to look at some ones like this. Uh, I'm going to show you how you can find um, different parts of different 3D shapes. And we're going to jump straight into an example on a cuboid. So as you can see, uh, I've got a box here. And it says we've got a box, there's a game that's going to be put in, there's like a, a metal rod that's going to be used to construct the game, and it says it just fits into the box, how long is it? So to show you what that looks like, I'm just going to draw a little line in red. Basically it's saying if we were to draw a line of the rod going from A to G, something like that, it's asking how long would that line be? So it's kind of going diagonally in three dimensions um, through the box, from the bottom left to the top right. And the most important thing that you can do on any 3D Pythagoras question is draw a sketch. Now, these sketches don't need to be to scale or anything like that, but it does really help if you draw a nice neat sketch and you label it as you go along. Now, if we were to make a triangle with AG as one of the sides, so we know that we're trying to find in red this side A to G. It starts at A and it goes to G. The A to G is going to basically also include this side at the bottom here, and this side on the side here. So we can see that G goes straight down along the bottom and it hits C. And then that one joins up from A to C. And I'm going to do that one in blue so you can see it. That line there is in blue. That line there is A to C. So we can make a right angle triangle, just like the ones we've been using last lesson, made up of those three corners. And as you can see, my sketch isn't perfect, but that's okay. I'm just going to kind of tidy up those corners, maybe if you can. Oh, a little better already. Ooh, don't worry if it's not, like I said, don't worry if it's not perfect. Um, and we can label on any information onto here that we already know. And we can see that the line going from G to C is 60 centimeters long. So we can label this side here 60 centimeters. But we don't know what the red one is, that's what the question's asking. Oh, is it going to come back? Please come back. Double camera. There we go. And we, need, we don't know what the blue one is, we don't know what the red one is. So we're going to have to, first of all, find that blue line. So we need to draw another sketch to help us find that blue line. The blue line there is a line that goes from A to C. Notice I'm just drawing the same right angle triangle every time. We don't know what that line is, but we do know that we have a right angle triangle from A going down to B and B going across to C. That's the base of the prism there. We know that from A to B is 40 centimeters, so we labor that onto the diagram. And from A, B to C is 80 centimeters, so again, labor that onto the diagram. Using our formula from last lesson, we know that to find the longest side, we can say, well, this longest side C is going to be the square root of 80 and 40 squared. And when we do that on our calculator, and I did write down the value here a second ago, let's say if I kept it. If you do 40 squared and 80 squared, it actually gives you the square root of 8,000. Now we could simplify that, we could write it as a decimal, but I'm gonna leave it as just the square root of 8,000. You're gonna see why in a moment. So we're just gonna leave it as it is, because that's gonna be part of our working out. And we're just gonna bring that down to here, and we're gonna use it here. Now the reason we're going to keep it as a root is going to be very obvious, I hope. So, again, we want to, oh, we want to find the longest side, a to g. So we know that it's going to be the square root of the two smaller sides added together. The 60 squared, but also 
their root of 8,000, but we're going to have to square it. Now, when we square root and square something, those two actually cancel out. So it actually becomes the square root of 60 squared plus the 8,000, and we just cancel out the square root. So by not putting it as a decimal and not simplifying it, but just leaving it as that root 8,000, then by squaring the square root, it just becomes the number. Instead of square root of 8,000, it's just 8,000. Then once we do that on the calculator, it will give us the square root of 11,600. You can either simplify this into uh, 10 square root 116, and then you can go further than that, which is 400, blah, blah, blah etc, etc. Um, I'll show you that in a second. Or we can write it as a decimal. We could do 107.7 centimeters. Uh, let's just quickly simplify this one. 11600. I know that 400 is a factor. So I'd say, okay, 400 times 29. So I know it's going to be 20 root 29. I hope I've got that one right. It's embarrassing if I haven't. Um, so that is how we can do that. Uh, 400 or oh, times 300, isn't it? No, that was right the first time. 29. Good, just checking that one, that one works. So keeping it as a root is really important. Two sketches. Notice I've color coded them. Do the base first, then the one you want to find. Sketch one, sketch two and you carry that value forwards and keep it as a root. Let's try another one. We can also do this for pyramids. Now I know we haven't done too much on pyramids, they're not prisons, I know we said we're going to do prisons, but I can show you that a pyramid can still be done. It says we've got a pyramid which is a square on the bottom, four equilateral triangles on the side, so they're all the same, so it's uh, that makes our life easier. And I put the first part of the solution and I'm going to show you the sketch of why it is. So it says we're going to find the height of the pyramid. That's that bit from the top straight down to the middle. You'll see that I've marked point X on the diagram. Because X is right in the middle of that square. If, you're draw if you weren't given point X, what you could have done is you can do an X through the middle of any uh, square and it will give you the center point. But we're going to find this length here. To find this length here, we are also going to need, however, one of these lengths here in red. So we're going to need our two sketches. Let's first of all think about that red line from D to X. We obviously need to complete it to make a right angle triangle because our Pythagoras theorem we have only works with, uh, with triangles. Right angle triangles, I should say, sorry. Now, this length here, of course, this triangle is like this one at the base there, something like that. Now we don't know that exact length, but we do know this length is half of BC. It also tells us that the side lengths are 10. So we could have said, well, this is 10, and this is 10, and this is 10, and this is 10. So half of it is going to be 5. And going inwards, half of this is also going to be 5, because it's halfway across. So then our square root here is going to be 5 squared plus 5 squared. Now, I see a lot of students say that's going to be 10 squared. It's not. Okay, it's actually going to be 25 plus 25. It's going to be the square root of 50. Again, don't simplify it. Leave it as a square root. Leave it as the square root of 50. Now we can draw our second sketch with the red line. The blue line we're trying to find, which is the height and this line going up here. So we know now the length of the red line, but we don't yet know the length of that diagonal from E to D. So we may have to draw ourselves a third sketch, but that's okay. But we know now, we can fill this in, that this length here is the square root of 50. So let's just Move that, oh no, undo. Let's just move that over here, and we're going to now find that length of that blue line. So, again, we need a sketch, and we need to think about 
how are we going to find that? So it tells us that we have four equilateral triangles with side lengths of 10. So actually, we know that the base is 10, but we also know that if the triangles are equilateral, then the side at the bottom here, let's think about it, if we know that this side at the bottom here is 10 and the triangles are equilateral, we also know the diagonals must be 10. So that's 10, that's 10, 10, and 10. So, oh, no. so now we can add that the diagonal is 10 centimeters. So now we know that. If we didn't get given that in the question, we would have had to work it out. But now we know that, we can say a different formula. We take the longest side and we subtract the shorter side squared. Don't forget those squares are going to cancel out. So it gives us the square root of 100 minus 50 and it's equal to the square root of 50. Um, because it's equilateral, of course, square root of 50. So, draw your sketches, fill in your diagrams, leave it as a root, square root of 50, can we simplify that? Well, yes, we can say it's 25 times two, so it's equal to oops, five root two. Let's carry on uh, working. So we're gonna have a look at a 3D Pythagoras example now using just variables, x, y, and z. Uh, just because we're going to use it in a minute, z is this height on the right as well as the height on the left. So, any question like this, same as any other question, first thing we need to do is think about our sketches. So let's just move that over there. If we want to find that blue line, essentially we're looking for this blue line here. We know that we're going to need to join it with two lines here and here. We can see that that height there is Z, but we don't know the base here. I'll redraw it in red so we can see it a bit more clearly. And that red line is going to be unknown. That red line is going to be this one. Oops, terrible line. Try again. This one here. So we also need a sketch to find the red line, which is joining up the other two like so. And uh, we can see that this one here is X and this one here is Y. So two sketches again, start off with the one at the bottom. We've got X, we've got Y. To find that red line, it's going to be the square root of X squared and Y squared. Carry that forwards. And if we are to square this, we will have the square of the square root. They're going to cancel out in a second plus z squared. And something interesting we're going to notice here when we've got all variables is that oh, when we multiply this expression here out, well the cancelled out squares and the square root, it actually leaves us with x squared plus y squared, once we cancel out, plus z squared but don't forget, what have I forgotten to put on? That the whole thing is square rooted. Put that nice and thick so we can see it. So it's the square root of all three variables. And that's a formula that sometimes you'll see referred to. Okay, that for cuboids, you can square root the square of all three dimensions. So just to recap, First diagram, second diagram, and we're looking for square root of all three dimensions, x squared plus y squared plus x squared. Finally, uh, be careful when you look at different shapes, okay? This formula only works for cuboids or cubes, okay? It won't work for shapes like this and I'm going to quickly show you why. Let's look at first of all, let's imagine I was trying to find this length in blue here. We draw a little sketch, okay, we can see that the blue line, we've got the base and the diagonal, it's like a flat panel on the side, so that leads us down to here and we can see it's actually d squared minus l squared. We could have also used h and w, 
Uh, so we could have also, if we wanted to, said it was half a quarter w squared plus h squared. Similarly, this red line here, that's going from like the point of the triangle down to the middle. So it's kind of going through. Imagine that's a tent. That's like a bit of string going from the top of the door straight down. And that one there, hopefully we can see, is joining up with this line along the bottom. So that's this line here, the L. We can see it's the length L, height H. So it's going to be H squared plus L squared. So again, it's not the three dimensions added together. So just be careful. This is a great formula to use for cuboids, but it only works for cuboids. And any time you're doing any of these questions, the most important thing is to draw a sketch. Okay, sometimes people talk about sketch goals because you should, your sketches should be totally goals. So just think about uh, how you know, cool you will be much cooler than doing a TikTok if you draw good sketches. So, Pythagoras in 3D. Just remember, draw sketches and keep things. Let's go back to that very first one. You keep it as a root, it makes your life much easier. Have a go at these, draw some sketches, use your book to help you. The sketches don't need to be to scale and keep things as roots.